In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Well, welcome to St. Leonard's. It's wonderful to see some returning faces, some very familiar faces from afar who joined us to today. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a, a second. Uh, and also to say that we've uh, conducted a risk assessment so that those who are speaking during the service can temporarily remove their face coverings on the basis of their distance from you. Now, these connections of old of which I was speaking, I realised during the week that as I was reading the away bands, I might have a connection with this uh, family. So, uh, welcome uh, to you, Maguire's from uh, Whitford, and this is the third time of asking, and so I'm going to read these bands. I publish the bands of marriage between John Michael Richard Green and Leanne Michelle Maguire, both resident in this parish of St. Leonard's Lexton and to be married in the parish of St. Mary Dedham. This is the third time I'm asking if any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. That's an excellent sign. And um, I hope you don't mind me. Uh, you could actually just to, 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 step, to stand, John and Leanne, I'm sorry. But we just um, would like to say it's wonderful to have you uh, here in the parish and here with us today. And we're just going to pray for you if that's okay. Heavenly Father, that you blessed marriage with your son's presence at the wedding of Cana. Uh, we give thanks to you for all those who commit themselves to each other, and especially today to John uh, and uh, Leanne. Uh, we ask that their life together may continue to be a blessing on all those uh, around them, and that their wedding will be a day of joy. We ask this in the name of that same Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. What better way to begin a service? Uh, we're going to pray in a moment together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you, God, our God. We have not loved our neighbors. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, Lord God. Amen. Mighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we remain seated, we say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord of God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. 
So we pray uh, for the collect for this feast of the Virgin Mary. The mighty God, who looked upon the lowliness of the Vir Blessed Virgin Mary and chose her to be the mother of your only Son, grant that we who are redeemed by his blood may share with her in the glory of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we hear our Bible readings. The first lesson is from Isaiah 61, starting at verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Galatians chapter 4, starting at verse 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir, through God. This is the word of the Lord. rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength in his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped the servant, his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, Abraham and to his descendants, Forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Singing 
I really miss uh, singing. Singing is such a crucial part of worship uh, and our humanity, who we are. Much of the Bible uh, was sung and is intended to be sung, and the canticles of Luke are songs. And among them, we have this very great uh, song, the Magnificat. And yes, I believe that Mary really did sing the Magnificat. I don't think she spoke it. I think she sung it. Because she had already said yes to God. She said yes to a life of pain and joy, of sorrow and service, of salvation and hope. And the awe of that, from the awe of that, flows a song. Now the Bible tells us that Mary found favour with God. She bore the Son of God no less in her womb. She is blessed among women. It tells us that she said and lived out this. She said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. So we must learn. We need to learn from Mary's faith, from her humility, from her obedience, and crucially, I think, from her thoughtfulness. Mary is always relevant. Those separated from their loved ones dying of COVID have been Mary, a friend, uh, had Mary a friend who watched from an enforced distance as her son died. A sword indeed pierced her song. But I wonder, uh, when this song was first sung, how Mary's voice sounded. Was it strong and joyful? Uh, did it falter? Was it the voice of uh, a girl, the voice of a confident woman? A song needs a singer. And Mary herself, I think, is critical to the full beauty and power of the Magnificat. Mary was very probably a teenager, a young teenager. She was pregnant, she was unmarried at crucial moments in the story. As a woman, she had little power in her society. And as a teenager who was pregnant outside of marriage, she was in very grave danger. She might even have been stoned to death. She was young and inexperienced, facing up to the prospect of giving birth at a time where hospital care didn't exist and where mother and baby mortality was very high. And yet, when God calls upon Mary to carry Jesus in these circumstances, she says, yes. What a ridiculous thing to say. What a ridiculously beautiful thing to say. Yes, in faith and obedience and wonder. But also don't forget, yes, in great perplexity and fear and trembling. Now, I wonder, if we're being honest with ourselves, how many of us are willing to say yes to God even when uncertainty and worry surround us? Mary says yes as a lonely, powerless young woman. She agrees to something that will put her in grave danger. And we know, moreover, that she was a profoundly reflective person. She pondered the risks, I'm sure. And she said yes, here I am the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Yes, God, yes to what will be. I trust you. That is what she said and did. And of course, that yes was also a yes to becoming a refugee as the Holy Family fled deadly violence in the Middle East. Now how blessed they were not to try to flee to contemporary Britain and suffer the hardness of heart the contempt, the demonising, the mawkish media interrogations and the flouting of maritime law that we reserve for those so desperate that they try to cross deserts and seas. Now, in the Magnificat's music is the justice and love and compassion that we are called to as Christians. And that time of song weaves together the past and the present and the future. So you have these phrases and resonances uh, from the Old Testament and you have 
this image of God's kingdom finally, fully realised. Interestingly, the past tense is used to describe the future, if you think about it. He has put down the mighty from their seat. Not sure that's quite happened yet. But the Old Testament prophets used to speak in that way, and that's because they were so certain of God's promises, they'd speak of them as already accomplished. So Mary's song describes this turn of the world upside down. And Mary knew as she sung that this had already begun because, ridiculously, God had looked with favour on her in her loneliness. He had asked her of all people in all places. So knowing the singer enhances the meaning of the song. It's that person that sings of this great upturning. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly, filled the hungry with good things, not the deserving hungry, the hungry, with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. And what this means is that God's kingdom, it doesn't entail some sort of levelling out of power and wealth and pride to a healthy average or a, a happy medium. It means this, a, a complete upturning. The lowly lifted up. The refugee from violence welcomed with honour. The power obsessed and corrupt and deceitful, utterly humbled. And read on through Luke and Acts, and you'll see that made real in Jesus' ministry, in the ministry of the apostles. And look for the kingdom of God breaking in around you now, and it is, and you will find glimpses of the very same thing. Now, the pandemic uh, continues to show us uh, the injustices of our world. It has laid some of them bare, uh, those who were forgotten in some care homes, those who are reviled uh, for whatever reason, those unable to access medicine, those seeking safety through various methods. COVID is clearly bringing a change to the world and to the church, but we cannot assume that, that change will be for the good, and that's why we need, by this, we need this song. Faced by change, are we going to collapse in alarm? Are we going to retreat to self-interest? Are we going to find the most convenient scapegoats? Are we going to grab what we can and hunker down? Or are we? Are we going to sing? Are we going to sing Mary's song and feed the hungry? And I believe passionately that one of the wonderful things about music, ordinary everyday music, if you sing a beautiful melody, people will join you. This stuff is beautiful. We need to sing it with our lives, and people will join us. But, as with all the best songs, there's a bit of a tricky bit in here. And it's a bit that I get a bit worried about. And that's this. Am I willing, are we willing, to consider that there might actually be pride, or lust of power, or a desire to grab material things in me, in us, in our families, in our churches, in our institutions, in our nations. When we sing that song, are we willing to be humble and open ourselves to give, to repent, to share, to see the error of our ways so that we can see those promises uh, made real? I have sung the Magnificat in some glorious buildings all over the place. And I have to say, in some of those places, in some of those contexts, those words have felt cut completely out of step. Completely out of step. I needed to hear the original singer singing that song too. And that song of God's might and great upturning coming with the kingdom could only, I think, have been sung by that young, pregnant girl in a culture where she was not merely lowly, but Mary was actually a scandal and an embarrassment. So who are the scandals of our time? Who are the embarrassments, the scapegoats? 
Those are the people, like Mary, on whose lips these words find power. And on those lips, this song is the most radical and hopeful song ever sung. My song, my life, magnifies the Lord, she sang. How wonderful it would be if we might sing that song too. So please, and I'm preaching to myself here, uh, follow Mary's example and ponder deeply. How might you magnify the Lord by your life, your song, your being? How will you participate in God's lifting up and feeding and setting right? And will you, will I, be willing to embrace humility, repent and reject the pride, the greed, the tyranny, the hardness of heart, the fear that have no place in God's kingdom, and yet in these times of crisis seem so very attractive. Amen. So as we remain seated, uh, we say together the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, the bringing all things to an end. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was what a kind of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son Worship and glory, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God the Father. for all 
church leaders, bishops, clergy and laity, that your Holy Spirit will fill them afresh today, enabling them to spread your good news with joy in their hearts. We give thanks to you, Lord, for the ministry team here at St. Leonard's, particularly thinking of Matt, Sean, Martha and James, as they prepare for a very well-earned rest. May they find refreshment and renewal in you. And we hold it before you, Maggie and Jackie, as they continue to work towards their priesthood. We give thanks that we can reach beyond the four walls of this building using social media and pray for all who come seeking. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for the joy of human love shared in our homes, places of work, hospitals and care homes. May there always be time for the warmth of loving concern and the comfort of being valued. We pray for all young people receiving aid and the GCSE results at this time. We ask that you be with them as they discern the next path on their journey. Help us to encourage and support all who are learning with generosity and trust. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will fill the lonely, all those whose lives are affected by frailty, pain or illness. And thinking of all those who are awaiting surgery or results from tests. And we give you thanks, Lord, for all who care for us. Pray for all those who have asked for our prayers this week. For Tim, Dory, Sheila, Carol, Kathy, Joan, Graham, Tony, Gabrielle, Margaret, Susanna, John, Jean, Ashley, Wynne, Frida, and Ernest, Roy.
before we come to the piece. I'll just explain how the distribution works for the time being. And if you're in the pews, then a, a steward will uh, tell you when it's time to uh, come forward. We're actually going from the back forwards, uh, leaving a, a gap, equivalent to the gap between the um, arrows on the ground there. And there is hand sanitizer at the, the front for people to use uh, before you receive. It has to be a given and a received in, in silence uh, for the time being as, as well. And for those who have not uh, returned before today, just to reassure you, uh, the wafers that you'll receive have been uh, carefully prepared beforehand. They're kept in a, a sealed uh, cyborium that will only be opened once I thoroughly cleanse my hands, put my spaceman's helmet on, and uh, uh, put this very hot thing on again. Uh, make sure that I'm uh, absolutely ready and then um, the wafer is, is dropped carefully into uh, your hands. I'm sure I've omitted something as is my way. Basically follow a steward because they're the people that know what they're doing. <laughs> and so, the peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you though. Let's pray this prayer together, giving thanks for the gifts God has given us and for the honour he gives us in allowing us to give them back to him. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. The Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son Jesus Christ to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And now we give you thanks because he shared our life in human form, from the warmth of Mary's womb to the stillness of the grave. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God. Praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey this command, 
send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpour may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms. Bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Leonard, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for honour and glory of yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's presence here among us as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. I should have said, of course, that we're receiving in one kind at the moment, that is, receiving the wafer alone, not the wine. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be. Though many of us here will receive the sacrament in a moment, in solidarity with those who are at home or who cannot receive the sacrament, we pray the prayer of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for the benefits you have given me, for the pain and the insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, see you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen.
was high, who was handmade for the Word made flesh. We thank you that in the sacrament of our redemption you visit us with your Holy Spirit and overshadow us by your power. Strengthen us to walk with Mary the joyful path of obedience, and so to bring forth the fruits of holiness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Pray together. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of the cross. Amen. Well, it's been wonderful to have you all here. Wonderful to have those who are uh, visiting us today. We did very well indeed, especially you, Mick and Margaret. <laughs> it was wonderful to uh, have you uh, here. Um, you may be familiar with uh, The Cloud of Unknown. It's a great spiritual work of the Middle Ages. Halfway through the distribution when I could no longer see out of my glasses, I wonder whether I've been assumed into that cloud of unknown. Um, uh, there are some exciting things happening. Uh, there's even song this evening, which you can follow through Facebook or through uh, YouTube. It arrives at 6 p.m. All sorts of people from the church have been involved in putting it together, uh, especially Maggie and, and Simon uh, and the choir, to whom I'm extremely grateful. Um, it's a wonderful act of worship, which I've seen in advance, and I hope you can really enjoy it. There's an order of service there as well. Um, the school holidays are sort of grinding on, and this is the point where people think, well, what can I do with the kids now? Well, we have created a treasure hunt, which you can find in the weekly news sheet and also up online. It's actually suitable for adults. I think um, if I ever move on to another parish, you should give this treasure hunt as a test to your new incumbent. It's about how well you know uh, the ecclesiastical parish of of Lexington. Um, it's tremendous fun and I uh, commend it to you. Um, also tremendous fun is the electoral roll and the annual church meeting. Uh, I'm not joking, it's been great fun this week getting things ready. So, um, uh, if you are on the electoral roll, you don't need to do anything. If you'd like to come onto the electoral roll, there are, there's an explanation in the email and also a form at the back. The 23rd of August is deadline. There are the notices that are required for the APCM up now, it's the annual church meeting, as well as forms for church wardens, uh, PCC membership and deanery synod representatives. Again, you can read about that in the email. If you need a hard copy, there will be at the back of church at the end of this uh, service. Just ask a steward. And finally, the one thing I really do miss even more than seeing is the chance to, to chat to people and socialise to people. And it really grieves me that it's not possible to do that at the moment. We have to keep a regular eye on what we're doing to ensure that we're abiding by our risk assessment and what's asked of us. Uh, I'm afraid that does mean that we must keep the paths in church and outside uh, clear and flowing and moving. And so this is still not yet an appropriate place for us to um, socialise. I know that brings great pain and irritation, not least to myself. But I, I need to just ask, please, that we keep the paths uh, clear and moving, especially between the 9.45 and 11 a.m. service. And so, the blessing. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.